Canada has increased its support for Ukraine with an additional $60 million investment to train Ukrainian pilots on the F-16 fighter jet, as announced by Defense Minister Bill Blair. This announcement was made in the lead-up to a NATO ministerial meeting in Brussels. This new investment builds upon a previous commitment of $15 million by the Canadian government, aimed at funding civilian instructors from Montreal-based Top Aces Incorporated, a company specializing in fighter jet flight training. The F-16 jets, which will be provided by Norway, Denmark, and the Netherlands, are not part of Canada's military fleet but are utilized by top aces. The funds are designated for covering the costs associated with spare parts, weapon systems, avionics, and ammunition for the F-16s, emphasizing Canada's ongoing commitment to support Ukraine's self-defense efforts and the maintenance of a rules-based international order. Meanwhile, the United States, participating in the Ukraine Defense Contact Group, UDCG, meeting, has not announced any new funding or equipment commitments for Ukraine. A significant $60 billion aid package for Ukraine is currently pending in the U.S. Congress, with President Joe Biden urging for its swift passage to avoid benefiting Russia. Additionally, Canada is advancing in its commitment to supply Ukraine with additional armored vehicles, specifically for medical evacuation purposes. This follows a pledge made by the Canadian government during Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky's visit to Ottawa last fall promising an extra $650 million for the procurement of at least 50 armored vehicles, the first batch of which is now prepared for delivery. Blair emphasized the importance of timely delivery to Ukraine while ensuring the needs of the Canadian armed forces are met. In a recent online Q&A with journalists, Julianne Smith, the U.S. permanent representative to NATO, dismissed the idea of transferring the coordination of the Ukraine contact group to another country. Smith highlighted the effective results produced under U.S. leadership and confirmed the U.S.'s intention to continue supporting the initiative. Smith also commented on the expectations surrounding Ukraine's potential formal invitation to join NATO at the upcoming Leaders' Summit in Washington this summer. She suggested that while full membership might not be offered at this stage, the alliance is likely to demonstrate significant support and a closer relationship with Ukraine.